So sequencing started quite a while ago. In the 1970s, a professor called Fred Sanger, who is really quite a remarkable man. He's one of only two people that have won two Nobel Prizes for two different discoveries, which is a pretty amazing feat. I mean, it's an amazing feat to win one, but to win two is, is phenomenal. Um, and so Fred Sanger invented um, a way of doing DNA sequencing, which is called mm -hmm. di deoxy chain. And the basis behind di deoxy chain termination is that in normal DNA, you have nucleotides. So you have, for example, DATP, DTTP, DCTP, and DGTP. And these are deoxynucleotides. And the advantage of deoxynucleotides, well, they're not really the advantage, but the role of them is to create DNA and to make a chain where you have the different letters like this. And the sequences are joined in part by this deoxy group here. So as you add a new base, if we added a DCTP, it would come in here as a C using this deoxy part of it. And what Sanger knew was that if you mixed into this a dideoxy CTP, when it got added to this chain as a C, it was now, um, that chain was terminated and there was no way you could add a new molecule to it. So if you tried to add something, so if we tried to add, for example, a DATP, it's blocked because of the second deoxy part of the ribose molecule. So the idea with chain termination is that you mix together your normal DNTPs that you need to synthesize DNA, and you mix in a small amount of the dideoxy NTPs that cause the chain to stop growing. Okay? And so as you replicate the DNA, Sometimes, as we're coming along, we'll add a dideoxy TTP, and this piece of DNA will no longer be able to be replicated. Then, maybe a bit further along, maybe we add a dideoxy ATP, and this piece of DNA will no longer, of course, it's replicating from the top one, not from this one. And then, Perhaps we add a different, we have a different termination reaction where we stop here and we've stopped on a DGTP. So what happens is that as you replicate this DNA over and over and over again, at different points, the chain gets terminated by the addition of the dideoxy nucleotide. If you, at the same time as doing that, if you include radioactivity, so we have, for example, DATP that's labeled with 35 sulfur molecules or 32 phosphorus molecules. Then you can use a pretty simple radioactivity detection technique where you just expose a photographic film to the DNA molecules to see um, how the DNA looks. And that's what's shown in this figure here on the right. So basically, um, we take this set of DNA, we separate it out on a long gel, and we put that gel next to a piece of photographic film, and where we get a black band is where we have um, our radioactive phosphorus. And so each ladder in that band corresponds to uh, one of these different DNA molecules. So this was the dominant sequencing technology. Fred Sanger um, developed this technique in the 1970s, and it was really the dominant sequencing te technology up until about 2002. Okay, so for a long time, it was the dominant sequencing technology. Over the years, it developed a little bit, and so instead of using radioactivity, we started using fluorescent molecules and having fluorescence detection. And when you do fluorescence molecules, you see something like this trace where you have peaks 
And each peak represents um, one of your pieces of DNA coming through. They're a peak because it's still migrating through a physical gradient, and the gradient, the DNA is migrating because of its charge. Um, and because you're moving a DNA molecule through a physical gradient, you get a peak, you don't get a discrete binary unit. The advantage of Sanger sequencing is that you can get quite long reads. And so typically, you'll get about a kilobase, a bit less, maybe 800 bases. I think this particular read I'm showing is about 800 bases. Um, and you get quite high accuracy. The disadvantage of Sanger sequencing is that it's pretty low throughput. And so you can do 394 sequences at once. 394 sounds like a lot, but as we'll see with the newer sequencing technologies, you can get many millions of sequences or billions of sequences at once. It's still in use. We still do Sanger sequencing. And in fact, this trace that I'm showing you is one that we created over the summer um, because we're interested in sequencing a very small region of DNA. And so if you have a piece of DNA and you're just interested in sequencing a short piece um, that's maybe, let's say, 1 kb long or 2 kb long, then it's actually very cheap to uh, develop a technique where you design primers against that piece of DNA, do the amplification, do the sequencing, um, and it can cost about $3 to have that done commercially. So this trace that I'm showing cost about $3 to make. So it's pretty cheap. It's great for a single piece of DNA. We still use it, and we still generate traces like this.